Okay, so let's move into the the things that have caused issues. So with the Futo open source definition, what was the intention of releasing that document? Because I know now on the statement on open source, it says it was meant to be like a, a parody and poke fun at the OSI, but when I read it and when a lot of people read it, it didn't feel like that. And maybe the, I, I, I'll grant you that it was a parody, okay? But what I will say is like it, it felt to me that it wasn't clear in any way that it was supposed to be to me. Like, the only line that really indicated that was the first one where it was, like, a negation of the first line of the OSI's definition. But what do you have to say on that? Yeah, so I, I would say... Okay, so the Fudos, the open source definition, yes, it was a tongue-in-cheek parody of the OSI's, the open source definition. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that that was written by... Uh, our CEO, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's really just was just meant to be kind of like a, a little bit of a joke. It wasn't meant to be a document that uh, would get like circulated around widely as like our <laughs> as like our definitions for our licensees or whatever. I don't I don't know. Pe people have taken it all different kinds of ways and interpreted it all sorts of different ways but it, mm -hmm. it is just meant to be a tongue-in-cheek parody of what they have written on their thing mm -hmm. because uh, it, like we simply do not care about the OSI we actively think that they're doing horrible things in the uh, you know in open source land I, I'm hesitant to use the word community over and over again but uh, it, yeah, I, it rolls I don't up like the tongue, the term either I'm, really myself I yeah, use I it because I it's just really... easy but yeah yeah i we have a lot of issues with the term community here in terms of using that word for open source and all the critiques that have come out from particularly like the rails guy put out a critique about this mm -hmm. um but yeah so th that kind of definition it, it really was just meant to be a parody the definition that we put out um i saw some commenters on your video that were confused like you wrote the exact opposite of what the OSI defines it as. Didn't you realize this is the exact opposite? Did you never read it? It's like, yeah, that's that's the joke. You figured it out. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I, other than that, though, people have had a lot of issues with our use of the term, particularly Lewis and Aaron, our CEO, using this term in various videos and writing. Mm -hmm. But our stance has always been that we we simply just do not care about the OSI definition of the word. Like, they have no right, as far as we're concerned, to claim that word. Mm -hmm. They lost their case about the trademark. They don't have a say in how people use that word. But we we understand that, like, if people are confused and we're, like, doing all these, like, inside jokes about uh, essentially how much we don't care about the OSI, mm -hmm. uh, like that's that's all well and good uh, but if people are actually getting genuinely confused or misled or are misinterpreting what we're saying like a lot of people have been like trying to say that we're open washing it's like mm -hmm. we're that's not our intention at all we're not trying to claim anything our license is very clear about exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it mm -hmm. um and now it's even more clear now that we've released our definition of source first so from here on out we're just going to be probably saying we are source first here's the definition this is what we stand by mm -hmm. uh we we were just kind of using the word very cavalier because um we we just have disdain for these kinds of like semantic arguments in general i guess i would say but at the same time we don't want to confuse people. Like it's not our goal to confuse people. It's not our goal to like do this as like a, some kind of like ploy to open wash or any of these other things. Mm -hmm. Like we, we are very, very uh, consistent on where we stand on, on the issue, but mm -hmm. uh, people were taking this not in the way we intended it to be taken. We intended it to be taking us, taken as like poking fun at the OSI or poking fun at these organizations that, we simply don't care for right. and you know uh, like osi in particular like they're in bed with bad actors they're in bed with like these megacorps like almost all their funding comes from these like large-scale corporations pushing a specific narrative about open source that in my opinion benefits like these monopolies and this mm -hmm. is part of the problem 
like the OSI is just part of the problem as far as we're concerned. Um, and I look up OSI and then I forget that OSI for... is also the name of a networking model and it doesn't come up when I search for it. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> there it's we go. open source initiative. No, I, I know I, it I... is, but I just searched for OSI and it didn't come up properly. <laughs> okay, yeah, keep going with what you're saying. Sorry, I cut you off there. Just oh no, it, it's just the the OSI kind of enshrines all of these problems with open source and the way corporations use open source. Like, did you ever see the story about like the the uh, GPG guy? GPG guy? Uh, no. Yeah, the GPG maintainer. No, I don't uh, think I know that one. His name is v Werner. Um, you know, he's he's like a fundamental maintainer on basically every single repository operating throughout the entire like repo security pipeline. And he wasn't getting paid anything for his work and he was about to quit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like years and years and years of him working on like sustaining this project in like $20,000 a year in donations. Like it was just not enough. Mm -hmm. He was about to quit and he put out a thing saying like, look, I'm quitting this project that is like the bedrock of all these things. And all of a sudden, magically, a bunch of corporations decide to bail him out. It's like, mm -hmm. this person had been running this crucially important software for years and years, and they 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 simply did not care mm -hmm. until it became a problem. You know, they, they freeloaded until they couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is just like, it's unacceptable for most of these like really important open source infrastructure projects to be operating this way. And this is what happens with a lot of these permissive licenses. Like, the massive amount of the massive amounts of people that were using this software and simply not paying for it uh, is is just a problem for such a key piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And like here, we we support these kinds of narratives. Like there's all sorts of protests where like there's like this has been an issue causing people to like you know do all sorts of things. Like there's the color JS thing. There's the core JS thing. It's all the same issue. Like, mm -hmm. why did they convert their JavaScript library into a piece of protest where? Mm -hmm. Because they weren't getting paid. That was the whole thing. It was lost in the narrative of them, like, essentially, you know, causing all these bugs across all this infrastructure. But that just shows what an important piece of infrastructure it actually was. Mm -hmm. It's something so simple, yet one little change in it breaks everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, why wasn't this person getting paid? And we're not the only people that think this, I guess, is the thing. So going back just a bit, when you, you said you don't really care about like the semantic arguments and all of this sort of stuff, I, I think that's fair. But it's also important to remember that a lot of people, like the existence of the distinction between open source and free software is basically like fundamentally a semantic argument. And the entire foundation of this space is based on semantic arguments. So... Like, I and a lot of other people are very are very invested in those semantic arguments, and when the issues are brought up there that sort of conflict with that, like, there are going to be people that notice that very quickly. There are going to be people that call that out, and I, I, I get that you guys aren't, like, trying to do the whole open washing thing, and that's fair. I brought the term up myself in the video, and, like, the, from what I saw in the definition that you guys provided, like, that's how it looked, but if it's a parody, like, as I said, that's that's totally fair. Um, I, I do think the parody very much missed the mark, and a lot, like myself included, just didn't see it at all. Um, but where I was going with that basically is, where, where was I going with that? Sorry, I, I didn't write. I did not write the. No, parody. no, that's I'm not responsible. No, no, that, that's all good. That's all good. Um, uh, yeah, the semantic arguments. Right, right, right. The the point I was getting is like all everything in this space is based on semantic arguments. So it's I I get it. Like not seeing that that was going to be a big issue, but like yeah, I like as soon as I saw, I knew as so, like what sort of comments I'd be getting when I talked about that as well. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing is, is like it's it's important to like note all the comments that are just like. You know, most people don't know what the OSI is. Most people don't actually know what open source is. Most mm -hmm. people think that it is just like a plain term. And we think that it is just, or it, <laughs> I guess we're not saying this out of ignorance. We're saying it more so out of like a 
a particular stance, but right, right. a lot of people do just say this out of ignorance. And I can see why people might think that we were since we didn't make our stance clear. We hope that our stance is very clear now mm -hmm. that we put out like a letter and everything saying like, here's why we hate the OSI and why <laughs> we don't like them. Why are, why is the OSI our enemy? <laughs> you know, like I hope from this point forward, everyone knows exactly where we stand and exactly why we were doing this kind of like provocation, mm -hmm. which obviously wasn't clear in the in the little pieces that we put out before. Mm -hmm. um, and and for our new term that we're trying to like try out the source first thing, one thing that we as part of our conversations on this here is like we're not trying to start a movement like with this kind of thing. We don't want to start a movement or a community or whatever. Um, there, you know, there's all these like. I guess fanboy zealots that go around having these semantic arguments on the behalf of the Free Software Foundation or OSI or these other things. And I guess one thing that we do want to make clear with our new, um, you know, our our new software principles document that we put out for Source First is that we don't want to form some community of people going around being fudo zealots. Like that's not our goal. We don't want there to be yet another group of fans going around starting semantic arguments with people that is not our goal right. we we you know first and foremost we just want to make good software we want to take down these big tech giants through aggressive funding of projects that are disruptive to these large scale monopoly organizations this is fundamentally like activism against big tech is what we're trying to do and we want to like wrestle control back in the hands of users that is like the message that we're trying to send here not like go be a fudo zealot running around with the fudo definition and you know arguing with people online like that's that's not necessarily helpful to what we're trying to do i guess okay so one of the things i bring up with the osi is even if you don't know about the osi a lot of the way that open source is done today is sort of done implicitly with the definition that the OSI provides like the existence of like most of these open source licenses some of them predate the OSI for sure but the the more modern licenses and the way that a lot of people interact with them today is very much derived from the OSI stance so that's why I think like even even though you have issues with the OSI like I still think they're an important organization and do you like did sort of help to define the way and maybe you have an issue with that like they did help to define the way that open source is done today and i think there are a lot of people out there who actually do like the model provided by the osi like that i think is also why there's some pushback against it and why people are like well okay you're trying to do this thing but it's not open source it's something different and like I, I think that's the main reason why there's been pushback there.